Okay, hi there, and welcome to another in our series of the Edge and A-Level Economics webinars. Uh, we take a topic and we pose 10 multiple choice questions. It gives you a chance to check your understanding and see where your revision is going ahead of these really important exams. So this test is on the economic cycle and the multiplier. Good luck with these questions. Here's question one. The diagram on the right hand side there shows aggregate supply curves and aggregate demand curves for a country. What is most likely most likely to cause the equilibrium position to move from point X to point Y. Here's the chance to press the pause button, have a go at the question, and then just press play when you want the answer. So X has moved, uh, well, we've gone from X to Y. There's been an outward shift of aggregate supply and an outward shift of aggregate demand. So we're looking for a combination of causes that, that bring about those shifts. And the right answer to question one is... B, a decrease in interest rates and a decrease in electricity prices. Fall in interest rates is an expansionary monetary policy that would cause AD to shift out. And a decrease in electricity prices would bring down a fall, bring about a fall in costs for businesses and therefore cause an outward shift of short run aggregate supply. It's the only combination B where both factors are moving in the direction required for us to travel from X to Y. Let's move on to question two. Ah, oh, before we do that, here's an explanation of the of the, uh, of the answer. A decrease in electricity prices causes a fall in uh, cost, outward shift of supply. Decrease in interest rates causes an increase in AD. There we go, there's the explanation. Let's move on to question number two. Country is currently operating close to full employment level of national income. Which combination of macroeconomic policies would be most likely to have net deflationary effect? In other words, Policy is likely to have the biggest downward pressure on prices. Press the pause button, have a go at this question. So here we're looking for policies which bring about a fall in inflationary pressure, perhaps in fact a net deflationary pressure. So we're looking for two policies that have an effect of reducing aggregate demand. And the best answer to this question is C, an increase in income tax, and a 20% depreciation of the currency. A, a rise in income tax causes a fall in disposable incomes, which will squeeze consumption. A 20% appreciation of the currency causes a fall in import prices. Then we get spiced, strong pound, imports cheaper, exports dearer. So an appreciation of the currency would make imports cheaper and might also put a squeeze on export demand, which of course is an injection into the circular flow. Again, for question two, that's the only combination where both factors would act to depreciate or deflate demand. Here's question three. What is the main macroeconomic aim of supply-side policies? What's the main aim of supply-side policies? Have a go at question three. So supply-side policy, of course, can have several aims. What's the main aim, macroeconomic aim listed there? The right answer is... A, it's to increase the trend rate of growth in the economy to try and increase a country's productive potential. Here's a chart showing actual GDP for the UK in orange. You can see the economic cycle there. And estimated potential GDP for the UK shown in blue. Effectively, that's the rate at which the long-run aggregate supply curve for a country shifts out. Let's move on to question four. The diagram shows a possible short-run trade-off between two macro objectives, inflation and real national output. What could cause the curve to shift to the left? Have a go at question four. So here we're looking at a possible trade-off. In other words, as real output increases, the potential rate of inflation increases. What would cause the curve to shift to the left? In other words, what would cause a worsening of that trade-off between GDP growth and inflation? The answer to question four is D, an increase in the expected future rate of inflation. A decrease in money supply would cause inflation pressures to fall. A decrease in the current rate of inflation would have no impact on that. An increase in productivity would actually improve the trade-off because productivity growth means that businesses can produce more at lower prices. Unit costs go down. So uh, an increase in the expected rate of inflation would cause the curve, cause the curve to shift. It leads to an increase, for example, in the labour market, in wage demands, people asking for higher wages, which can then feed through to an increase in unit labour costs and lead to higher inflation at each level of national output. Let's move on to question five. 
the diagram shows the, the time path of actual GDP and of long run potential GDP of a country. What would help to reduce the divergence of actual output from potential output? Have a go at question five. So what's going to cause uh, there to be less of a cyclical path of GDP? The right answer to question five is, is B, automatic stabilizers. Now, automatic stabilizers are things which are kind of automatic. In other words, they're not discretionary. They happen automatically. They're fiscal changes as a country, as an economy moves through different stages of the cycle. So, for example, in a recession, the government takes out less tax from the economy, uh, so a fall in and leakage, and adds in more government welfare spending, an injection of demand into the economy. During a boom, the government takes out more in tax, because most taxes are progressive. People are paying more in VAT and earning more money, paying more income tax. And the government puts in less in welfare as real incomes are going up. So automatic stabilisers have the effect, hopefully, of reducing the amplitude of the cycle. Here's question six, a calculation question. <clears throat> Rising government spending of £800 million in an economy is estimated to have led to a final increase in GDP of £1,000 million. We're told the marginal propensity to save is 0 0.2 and the marginal rate of tax is 0 0.3. And the question is, what is the marginal propensity to import? Have a go at question six. So this is quite a hard question on the multiplier. <clears throat> Pardon me. We have to find the marginal propensity to import. The correct answer to question six is C, 0.3. Let's work through the answer. The value of the multiplier is the final change in GDP divided by the initial injection of aggregate demand, in this case, a rise in government spending. Therefore, <clears throat> we're told that the final change in national income is 1,000 caused by the multiplier times by 800 million pounds injection. So therefore, we know the multiplier is 1.25. 1.25 is the value of the multiplier. That is 1 over the marginal rate of withdrawal from the circular flow. We've been given two bits of information. We know the marginal propensity to save is 0 0.2. The marginal rate of tax is 0 0.3. So therefore, we know, that we know that the total rate of withdrawal from the economy must be 0 0.8 to get a multiplier of 1.25. <clears throat> so therefore, the marginal propensity to import must be 0 0.3. Let's move on to question 7. Assuming that the marginal propensity to consume in a closed economy with no government is 0 0.8, which of the following changes in national income would result from a fall in investment of £2 billion? So closed economy, we don't have to think about trade, exports and imports. No government, so no tax, no government spending. What, which of the following changes in national income would result from a fall in investment of £2 billion? Have a go at question number seven. Okay, slightly different style of multiplier question. There we go. I tell you the correct answer is B, a fall of 10 billion in national income. The reason is we've got uh, no government to think about, no trade. <clears throat> so therefore, the value of the multiplier is just 1 divided by the marginal propensity to save. We're told the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.8. Therefore, the marginal propensity to save must be 0 0.2. Therefore, the multiplier must be 5, 1 divided by 0 0.2. So therefore, two billion fall in investment. The be investments fallen will lead to a negative multiple effect of minus ten billion fall in national income. So therefore, the answer is B. Three more questions to go on this test. Here we go. Question eight coming up right now. What will reduce the value of the export multiplier? What will reduce the value of the export multiplier? Have a go at question eight. So the export multiplier here is the effect on national income of a change in exports. It's basically the multiplier. We're just putting the word exports in front. And the right answer is B, the operation of automatic fiscal stabilisers. <clears throat> I'll go through B in a second. Let's look at the others. A low propensity to import actually increases the value of the multiplier because it's a fall in the leakage. Likewise, a low rate of tax reduces leakages, therefore increases the multiplier. And low rates of unemployment benefits have no real impact on on the value of the multiplier. It's the automatic stabilizers. The key answer here is, of course, that when there's a rise in export uh, demand, national income will go up, but then the government takes more out in tax and pays less out in benefits. So the automatic stabilizer has the effect of reducing the value of the multiplier effects of an injection of demand. Question number nine. An economist's potential GDP is estimated to be 200 billion pounds. 
And currently, the actual level of GDP is measured as 140 billion. So actual GDP well below potential. In this situation, it is most likely that. Have a go at question nine. So what do we think for question nine? We're told here that the level of GDP is well below potential. In other words, the output gap, which is the difference between actual and potential GDP, is negative. What is likely to be happening? The right answer is D, the fiscal deficit will be rising. And the problem is probably going up if actual GDP is less than potential. Inflationary pressures will tend to be falling. And likewise, deflationary pressures will not, will not be falling. In other words, there will be less, uh, be more pressure uh, in terms of deflation. If the economy is well below potential, there's an increased risk of def deflationary pressure in the economy. The fiscal deficit will be going up because in a situation where actual GDP is well below potential, it's likely that unemployment is higher, therefore people pay less income tax, and business profits are likely to be lower than they would otherwise be. So again, cor corporation tax revenues may fall. Generally speaking, where actual GDP is less than potential, an economy is operating well within its PPF, and therefore the government budget deficit, the cyclical deficit, will tend to rise. Let's move on to our last question, which is question 10, of course. The table below shows different sets of changes taking place in an economy, changes in the exchange rate, changes in taxes on carbon emissions. All other things being equal, which one of the following combinations, A, B, C or D, will have the biggest effect of causing an inward shift of a country's short-run aggregate supply? Take a moment, press the pause button and think about the answer, and then press play when you want the answer to question 10. So which of these two changes would have the biggest effect on causing an inward shift of aggregate supply? We're looking for a combination here where both effects cause a fall in aggregate supply, both a change in the exchange rate and a change in the tax and emissions. And the right answer to question 10 is, is B. A fall in the exchange rate increases the cost of imports. Remember, spiced strong pound imports cheaper exports dearer, while it's the weak pound, imports become more expensive. And that would cause a, 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 a rise in costs, so it has to be B or C. And, well, we're looking for a, another increase in cost and the tax on carbon emissions. If, if businesses have to pay more for every tonne of carbon they emit into the atmosphere, that would also increase their, their cost of production. And if enough businesses, enough industries are affected by this, that would cause an inward shift of the aggregate supply curve. Now, there were 10 very different style of questions there, some calculation questions, some tricky ones, not an easy test. So I hope you've got a reasonable um, set of answers there. We we'll also have another go by pressing the video again. We now have a whole series of revision blast tests for you to have a go at to really test your understanding of micro and macroeconomics. Thanks for joining in on this one.